Do I really have the need for a laser? Aren't they dangerous? And aren't they expensive? Full disclosure, this machine was sent to me from Made the Best to do a review of it. They haven't paid me in any way and I will give you my honest opinion about this machine. But first, what is a laser? There are different types of lasers, but this one is a diode laser. And the diode laser is mainly used for engraving stuff since it isn't that strong. If you want to be cutting stuff, you should go for a CO2 laser or a fiber laser since the wattage of those machines are much higher. And if you want to engrave metal, you should go for a fiber laser. And the wattage of the machine will hint at how much it can actually do. But here's the thing about those cheap lasers that you need to pay attention to. They actually market this as a 20 watt machine, but that is actually the power going into the machine. And the output of the laser is more like 5.5. Now, do I really have the need for a laser? You can engrave wood and I guess that will be the main feature but it can actually cut plywood as well. And as you see here, I've actually cut up to six millimeter plywood. I'm not sure if it can do any more than that. Here I did cut out six mil plywood and glued it up in three layers. And this is a clamp that I found on Thingiverse. I'll link it down below. And it is attached with rubber bands. But as you can see, there's a lot of charring on the cut plywood. And that is because this machine doesn't have any air assist. And air assist is basically blowing out the fumes as the laser is running. If you want to be engraving stuff, this is a really good option, if not the best option. Because this runs really fast, up to 10,000 millimeters per minute. I thought the speed would affect the quality of the engrave, but in my opinion it doesn't. If engraving is the only thing you'll be doing, you could consider going for the cheaper, non-pro version. If you want to be cutting wood, I wouldn't go for a laser like this. Then you should probably look for a stronger laser or a CNC. But if you're on a budget and you want to be able to cut thin pieces of wood, this is a good option as well. To find the correct engrave settings, you could do one of these power scale tests, which I did here. One of the features that I was excited about was of course cutting leather. The non-pro version that I have is the 15 watt one and that can't cut any leather at all. But this one actually can. I was so surprised when I tried cutting this two millimeter leather and it cut straight through it in about five passes. There was some charring on that piece so I tried covering the leather with some masking tape and I did another try and it cut perfectly without any charring. So cutting leather as thick as this, that really changes the game for diode lasers. And this might actually be to the upgraded laser unit. And this one is actually a fixed laser. That means you adjust the entire laser unit instead of focusing with a little knob on the laser unit. To set the focus, Orter supplies you with this little pin that you set on the work surface and then you lower the laser until it hits the top of the pin. Then you just screw the laser in place and you're good to go. It can also cut paper, cardstock, acrylic, engraved tiles, and there's a bunch of things. You can check it out. There's a list on Orter's website. And there they also supply you with the optimal speed and power settings. But wait, aren't these dangerous? Yes, they are. And that might be the biggest downside to these open diode lasers. You see, it doesn't come with an enclosure. And if you've seen CO2 lasers, they usually come with some kind of enclosure so that you're protected from the laser. For these machines, they usually just supply you with these glasses. But for this machine, they did do a simple upgrade, which I don't know why they didn't do it before. And that is this plastic cover covering the laser. You should still be wearing the glasses though. And another thing about the air assist, since it doesn't have one, it creates a lot of fumes. And another thing about the air assist, since it doesn't have one, things can easily catch fire. And because of that, you should stay around while the laser is running. This machine has a flame alarm right here. So whenever it senses something catching fire, it will turn off the laser and alert you. And another health problem occurs because if you stay around, you will be exposed to the fumes created and you don't want to breathe in those fumes, especially if you're working with something like acrylic. Other types of lasers usually come with some kind of air extraction. So when running this, make sure you're in a good ventilated room or maybe outside. And if you want to go all in with it, you could build your own enclosure and add some kind of air extraction and maybe air assist as well. So aren't they expensive? So it depends. This one comes in at $449 when making this video. And the non-pro version lies around $300.
So can it engrave metal? No, but it will mark metal actually. I only did one pass on this, but it sure marked the metal. Can it engrave bottles? Yes, it can, but you have to get the rotary extension. Is it mobile? Yeah, it's super easy to move around and it doesn't weigh that much either. Can it engrave aluminium? Only anodized aluminium. And how big is the work area? It's 400 by 400, so three centimeters smaller on both axes than the non-pro version. All right, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.